Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Clubo. Today we will be making this angel ornament from the Winter Tail Collection by Art Gallery Fabrics. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. Here we go. I have my five inch square of this angel print and two five inch squares of this little red print, but I want to begin with the uh, sort of the foundation for the angel, which is this 25 millimeter head bead. You can find the instructions for the face in my Focus on Faces video. And then I have six inch wide tool, this sort of natural color, and I'll just draw off two lengths that are probably, well, look, now that I have my little <laughs> purple, mat here, I can tell you exactly, this is 20 inches, which is plenty long. So I fold those in half and then cut off a piece of ribbon, 15 inches. There we go. This is 1 16th inch wide double faced satin ribbon. I'm going to tie it off here with a square knot and then draw it through the bead from the bottom to the top. A 20 millimeter bead also works for the five inch, um, for the charm square size. But um, the 25 millimeter, I just feel like it um, just shows up a little bit better on camera but the 20 is also fine. I'm gonna squeeze out a little bit of hot glue right here, just like that, and then gently slide the bead down over the tool, pulling it through until the top of the tool barely shows at the top of the head. So that tool is really filling the hole in the bead. Then I'll tie off the top of this. Great. Now for the dress, I'm going to sew the angels in the center and then these to either side. This is the first time I've made this um, design with these fabrics, so I'm just kind of, you know, making it up as I go along. So I'll try this. I think it's going to be great. Um, the, the thing that I'm concerned about is the placement of the angels. I know this top is going to be gathered, so anything that's up here won't really show. I just want to make sure you can tell what the angels are by the time I'm finished <laughs> with the project. And if they're kind of lost in the pleats, then I won't make any more of these. But let's give it a try. I sewed the three squares together and I pressed the seams open. And now I'm going to apply, hopefully I have enough of this. Uh-oh, I might not. Let's see. Looks like it. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to apply this lace to the to the hem. I won't treat the hem in any other way. I'm not going to um, fold it under or hem it or anything, but um, I could use my pinking shears, but I like to keep everything fast and easy. So I'm just going to sort of uh, top stitch this along the hem with a little baby zigzag, maybe right along this bottom layer of petals. Here's how this looks. And then on the back, you can see my little zigzag stitches. And this is kind of fun. I have this little bit left over and I might use one of these flowers um, for her collar. But generally, I have this little jar and I will drop all little leftover bits in here. And at the end of the year, I use this. Can you see this here? Hold on. Here's how it looks. All this stuff. I will use it for um, nests. Hopefully I'll remember to put a link to that one. Little nests, they're so fun. And I just save all these little bits of vintage lace and modern lace. Here's some velvet ribbon, just little bits. It's really fun. And now I'll fold this together and I match up the lace. I don't care if the, you know, the top edge doesn't match up perfectly, but 
weirdly it kind of does, but I do want that lace to match up. And I will pin and I will stitch up. I will seam this right here and that will become the back of the dress. There we go. There's the back. And now I'm gonna gather this up. Since <laughs> I'm going to, um, let's see, turn the seam allowance to one side just so I have something very solid to, um, to secure my knot when I'm gathering. Sometimes I gather from the outside, but for some reason I'm <laughs> doing it this way. Anyway, I'm gonna gather this up with nice big running stitches and I'll just continue all the way around until I'm back to where I started. Okay, here I am back to the beginning, which is the back where I started. I'll draw that up and then I'll place the dress on the angel. There we go. And then I'll pull that tight. Now I wanna center this angel panel underneath her chin, right in the front here. And then we'll have a look. Okay, let me wrap this a few times, nice and tight. I'm trying to pull that uh, neck area to make it as small as possible. And then I'll stitch through those pleats. Back through. And then I wanna get this, um, this seam centered in the back. That looks good. So I'm gonna just uh, tie off my thread here in the back. And then I'll trim out this excess tool. I always have a lot of excess. It's easier just to trim it than to try to measure it and get it just right. Now, let's see, can you see the angels? I don't know if this is entirely successful, but I'm gonna finish this one anyway. Now I'll make her collar. This is um, 15 inches of flat white lace. It's about three quarters of an inch wide. You can use anything you like though. I actually bought this giant roll of this lace and I've been using it for four years and it still hasn't run out. <laughs> so I just keep using it, it works, you know. Anyway, I'm doing a running stitch in and out, in and out, in and out. And I'm gonna go from one end of the lace to the other. Um, there's no real secret to it, just gather it up. There we go, now I'll place this around her neck and join the ends in the back. This does not have to be perfect. I'm distributing the fullness of the gathers evenly so that there's not more or less on one side or the other. And um, pulling it very tightly, I'm making sure I'm right up to the bottom of her chin. I really want this to be centered. That's better. And then I'm gonna stitch through from the back to the front and then secure the thread in the back. That looks good. One thing that's nice about having this um, dark color in the center is that I can use, um, I can tie a nice white bow and it should really show. There's a nice contrast. I kind of like this flower, even though the scale is a little slightly large. Um, I just like the way that the color kind of blends in with the colors and the angels. I also tried this and I could always do a button or a little applique, but I'm just gonna go for it, even though it's rather large. This is the only one I have left of this. I bought this in a package at um, Michael's and it's my last one. So let's send this off 
just tying a bow from this 1 16th inch ribbon, same ribbon I've been using. And um, there's no magic to it. Just get the loops, you know, the length that you might like. And you can always trim the streamers. I think I'm going to just um, slide the bow actually underneath the collar. This big flower is going to be on the top anyway, and so why should I try to make it look so perfect sitting on top of the lace collar? And then place that under there. And then trim. And then I'll glue the flower. Now that is definitely overscale, but I don't care. I like it. Now I wish I had the auburn yarn for her hair, but I just don't have it here. So I'm going to use white. Um, I think since I went so big on the flower and the head bead is a little bit larger, I think I'm going to do the index card method. The uh, I have two four by six inch index cards stacked. And I don't know how far this yarn is going to go, but I'm going to wrap the short way. I'm using two strands. One is fuzzy and one is loopy. They're both mohair. That's all the yarn I have of the fuzzy yarn, so that's gonna be it. I wish there was more of a formula for this. It depends on your yarn, depends on how long you want your hair to be, and, um, and remember there's two layers. So what I'm seeing right here on the front, it's twice as much as that, so this is gonna be plenty. Now I'm going to stitch with my, my machine through the center back and forth. I'm folding this back and forth a few times to make sure I get that crease in there. And then I'm gonna reach in between the loops and tear out the card. And here we go. This I call the wig. So I'm going to um, apply some glue, some hot glue across the top of her head from, I would say from ear to ear, but go all the way down to the collar without getting glue in the collar, of course. And then the center of this wig goes at the very top. Then the, the, um, the extra wraps around to the back center. So I'll add some more glue here and then press the rest of this wig into that glue. Looks like I had a little extra. Yeah, I think this might be a little bit too much hair, even for me. So I think I'll uh, trim some of this extra out. Now I'm going to take a needle and thread and tie this off like this. Just wrapped it a couple of times and I'm going to knot it. And then I'll stitch through back and forth and then knot it again. Well, I went digging around and I found this little button, which is pink, but it's very pale. These buttons that are bigger, a little jingle bell. This um, bow, I actually have this in white and this little flower applique. What do you think? Let me see. The white has a little better contrast. What do you think? I like the bow. 
I'll go with a bow, but she needs her halo first. So here's my 20 gauge gold wire. This is about six inches. I'll fold it into I'll fold it into a loop and twist the ends together. Open up the loop to look like a circle. And bend the stem at a 90 degree angle. I'll add some glue here. And I'm going to stick this into her hairstyle right there in front of the hanging ribbon. And there's the hanger. So did I decide to go with this? I got this applique from uh, one of the sellers in my favorite little online vintage lace um, Facebook page. Put that right there. Very cute. Very cute. Now for her wings. These are the two lightest fabrics from this collection. And I think both of them would work for wings. White is more obvious because it seems like angel wings should be white. I don't know why, but, um, but sometimes I find that there's not enough contrast between the white and the white hair and the white trim and the white collar, and it doesn't show up as well. And this is a nice contrast, but I feel like this really isn't featured in the prints as well. There's also this white and red stripe, but since it runs diagonally, that's a little tricky. Um, I'm going to decide, and then I'm going to fuse this fusible interfacing to the back and cut it out. Well, I decided to go with something else. This is um, sort of a rose colored print and it says happy holidays, which means I'm gonna have to be very careful to um, make sure that I get that um, direction. I get that in the right direction. So I fused a circle of interfacing to the back. This is a four and three quarter inch circle. I'm gonna fold this. I'm gonna try to keep it exactly um, you know, in line with the, with the script there. And then I'm going to stitch all the way around. Oh, I need to mark the front first. <laughs> I've learned that lesson. Okay, let's see. So this is the front. So I'll put a little F here for front. And then I will be turning this through the opening that I make right here. Okay, but first I'm gonna sew all the way around with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. I feel like I didn't quite uh, fold it exactly. It looks like it's, I don't know, we'll see. When I turn it, we'll see how it looks. First I'm gonna use my pinking shears and pink around the seam allowance. And now I'm cutting an opening here. It's just a little cross, only through the front. The back is still intact. And then I'm gonna turn this wing piece through this opening. I'm making sure that the seam is all the way to the very edge and the corners are nice and pointy. And then I'm going to go to my iron and press this flat. There we go. Now it's a little wonky right there, but I don't think it's too bad. I'm going to add a scallop, a decorative stitch from my sewing machine in this sort of off-white color all the way around the round edge. It's hard to get this exactly right. I did a pretty good job of keeping a consistent distance from the edge, but I have a complete scallop on this side and over here I have half a scallop. That always happens, I don't know why. Anyway, I'm gonna squeeze some hot glue right here. I'm gonna press this into the back of her hairstyle. And we're done. I don't know, should I keep this purple mat in the, 
in the shot there. Mm. Oh, why not? Okay. Thank you for watching my video. If you're enjoying my tutorials, please like, share, and subscribe.